Are you tired of the same old image styles? Do you wish you could create images in any style instantly using just a reference photo? Well, now you can. And today I'm gonna show you how. Hello humans, when we scale your air overload and oh boy, this video is gonna be wild. Because today I'm gonna show you how to install the newest AI tool called Instant Style that allows you to generate brand new images in the exact same style of your reference picture. Just upload an image you want to copy the style of, input a prompt, and when you click generate, it will create a brand a new image in the style of the picture that you uploaded right here. And that's not even the best part, because you can also apply that style to another image. So once again, just upload the reference image right here, then upload the image that you want to apply the style to, and once you click generate, it will clone the style of the reference image and fuse it to the target picture to create a brand new fantastic looking image. This is the power of instant style, and it's really amazing. And to install this, you have two ways. The first is of course by using the one-click installer that is available for my Patreon supporters. Just download the installer and the launcher onto your computer, then double click on the installer, and after a few minutes, the web UI will start automatically. You really don't need to do anything. Everything is already done for you. Just do not forget to move the launcher into the instant style folder so that next time you want to launch the web UI, all you need to do is just double click on the launcher for the web UI to start automatically. Simple as that. And the second way to install this is, of course, the manual way. And I'm gonna show you how. So, first, as always, make sure that you have Python and Git for Windows installed, then you're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on my Hugging Face repository, where here you're gonna click on this little icon, then click clone repository, then click on this little copy icon to copy this entire line of code, then on your computer you're gonna create a new folder, and inside you're gonna click on the folder path, type cmd, press enter, this will bring the command prompt window, so here you're gonna press ctrl v to paste the line of code that we copied previously, then press enter, then we're gonna go back to the Hugging Face site, and click on the second icon to copy the second line of code, then back again in the command prompt window, gonna press Ctrl V, then press Enter, which will clone the repository onto your computer by creating this new instance style folder. Now make sure that you wait a little bit before everything is finished downloading because there is a lot of files to download. So if it feels like it's stuck here, do not panic, it's normal. Just be patient and wait for everything to be downloaded. And there you go, after a few minutes, everything is downloaded. So now that this is done, we're gonna need to go inside that folder. So we're gonna type CD instance style, then press Enter. Then we're gonna create a new virtual environment. So you're gonna type python -m -v -n -v -e -n -v, then press enter, then we're gonna activate the environment, then we're gonna install PyTorch with this command right here, then press enter. Okay, so next we're gonna go and install all the requirements, so you're gonna type pip install -r requirements.txt, then press enter, and then finally, once this is done, to launch the web UI, all you need to do is just type python app.py, and then press enter. And it will then give you a local URL, and if you hold control, then left click, you are now finally inside the web UI. So now we can finally have some fun. So what exactly can we do with this? Well, as I showed previously, you can do two different things. Either generate brand new images from a reference image. So like, for example, if I use some of the example images, and if I use like this image of this 3D rabbit, if now I write a prompt, like something like a, a cute dog, and if now I click generate, and there you go, you get something like this, like a cute dog in the same style as the image that you input right here, almost as if this was done by the same artist or the same AI model. But all of that was done with a single reference image. And I mean, this is really, really cool. Now, of course, although it's never gonna be perfect, the quality is still very, very impressive. And the second way you can use this tool, as I showed in the beginning of the video, is to actually take the reference style image and then apply that style to another image. So like, for example, if I scroll down and I click on advanced options, now you have another field where you can upload another image. So now if I upload an image of this woman right here and I change the prompt to something like an Asian woman, if now I click generate, I get something like this. So basically this final image is a combination of the style reference image of the prompt that you input and the final target image. And you can create some insane images just by modifying either the reference image or simply just the prompt. So like for example, instead of putting like Asian woman and I say something like a, I don't know, like a cat woman and then I click generate again, you can create some very weird images, uh, yeah. So yeah, like really the sky is the limit. Now there's also a bunch of other options that you can try, like the different style modes. I definitely recommend only using the style blocks or the style plus layout block. These usually provide like, the best results. The scale is basically the influence of the style image on the final generation. I usually recommend putting it at one, but you can of course play around a little bit with the values. Then here under advanced options, below the target image, you have the control net condition scale, which is basically how strong 
long the target image influences the final generation, so you want like the final image to respect more like the shape and outline of the target image, then you might want to increase that value. Or if you want less, you can of course decrease it. So depending on what you want, just play around a little bit with the value. Then you have the negative prompt and the negative content prompt. This is where you basically input what you don't want to see inside the image. And then for the rest, I definitely recommend leaving everything by default. I played a lot with these values and it's very difficult to really understand how good or bad they influence the final generation. So really just leave them by default. Or just play with them yourself if you really want to. Oh, also I forgot to say, if you are one of my Patreon supporters and you have access to the launcher.bat file, you can also edit the launcher and you can modify it to add a few arguments that you can find right here. So basically you can use the in-browser arguments to automatically open the URL in your browser, the server port argument if you want to specify a specific server port, the share argument that creates a public URL so that you can host on your computer and use it somewhere else, like on your phone for example. And finally, you have the model path argument that allows you to change the stable diffusion Excel model that is used for the generation. Now the default model that is using is the default stable diffusion Excel 1.0, but you can also choose other models as well. However, keep in mind that if you change the model, the final results might be completely unpredictable. And to find those models, you're gonna go on Hugging Face and search for a user called stable diffusion API, and then here you will see a bunch of different models that you can choose from for the generation. So like if I choose a random model, like for example this one, and I click on this little icon to copy this entire name, I can now go inside the launcher and after model path, I'm gonna replace Stability AI Stable Diffusion Excel Base 1.0 with the brand new name that we just copied. Then I'm gonna save the file and then relaunch the web UI. So now we're using the special custom anime model and if I input the same pictures and prompt as before and now if I click generate, I get something like this. So as you can see, it's kind of like a mix between the image style right here, the prompt, then the target image, and then the special anime model that we use for the generation. So yeah, if you want to use like a custom Stable Diffusion Excel model with instant style, well, you can also do that. So yeah, really like the sky is the limit. There is really so much stuff that you can do with it, it's absolutely insane. And uh, of course, if you are using a not safe for work model, you can, of course, generate um, not safe for work content. Now, obviously, this image will be blurred for YouTube, but um, let's just say that uh, you can see two mountain peaks in full view. So, yeah, it, it, it works. It just works. Oh, and also don't forget that I provide priority support for my Patreon supporters, so if you have any questions whatsoever, just send me a DM, and I will try to answer you as soon as possible. So yeah, there you go, this was Instant Style, an absolutely fantastic tool that allows you to combine the style of a reference image with a prompt, then fuse it with a target image, and by using a custom model. All of that to create this fantastic masterpiece. So yeah, this is really super cool. So that being said, definitely try this out, and have some fun. And there we have it folks, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome. You people are literally the reason why I'm able to make these videos, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.